Okay, we should be recording now. So, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to this COSI interim meeting. Um, this is an official ITF meeting. And as I do not well applies. Uh, I believe everyone in this meeting is already quite familiar with it, but in case uh, you have any questions, please do not hesitate to ask me. It's not working exactly as expected. Okay. Uh, so this is our agenda for today. Uh, we'll start with some administrative uh, review some document status. Uh, talk a little bit about the X509 draft. Uh, then for the CBOR that's certificates. And uh, we can use all the remaining time for HPK draft. Is there any bashing of this agenda? I'll take that as a no. So we went already through at the note 12. Uh, the minutes uh, will be taken here. Uh, Karsten has also shared the link in the chat, I so, saw. Uh, let us know if anyone has uh, troubles finding the link. We will share it again. Um, minute taking. Um, well, is, are there any volunteers? Uh, we uh, don't need a blow by blow representation of the discussions, mostly just some action items. I can take some notes for the first part. This is Hannes. Wonderful. Thank you, Hannes. This is Jonathan. Okay. I can help out. Perfect. Thank you both. And uh, I have Jabber open in case anyone uh, needs something to be relayed there. Uh, I will try to be taking uh, care of that, but yeah, if you see that I have missed anything, just let me know. And the uh, attendance uh, is recorded in the meeting notes, and the meeting is recorded. Oh, hi, Mike. Uh, we were just going through the administrative year now. Um, so, yes. Do you want to take it from here or should I continue with sharing? No, you, you should continue. You wrote okay. the slides, so that's fine. Thank you. Okay, yes. Um, sounds good. So, that's done. Uh, let's take a look at the document status. Uh, so for the hash aux draft, um, Ben created an issue and that is uh, related to uh, algorithms being by ordered or not it's not exactly uh, clear if that's going to be always the case as far as i understand and we might need to uh, make a disclaimer about that until this issue is cleared it seems that uh, the draft is blocked um, i think that doesn't affect the other uh, drafts that are already in the RFC editor, namely the BIS uh, draft. And there have been a number of uh, discussions with the RFC editor already. It seems to me that most things are 
uh, being closed now, but um, but uh, yes, uh, we can take another look to make sure both drafts are consistent with one another. And uh, for now, Ben uh, is leading the discussion with the RFC editor. Uh, so if he joins later, maybe he will be able to provide a little bit more uh, state there. But yes, uh, things are advancing, uh, even if a little bit slower than uh, we all hoped for. And right. hey, uh, Polo, yes. uh, who's going to do that um, consistency check just for the minutes? Uh, so it should be at least uh, the chairs and uh, Ben to spend some more time to make this consistency check. Thanks for the question, Jonathan. So yes, uh, the countersign document, uh, right now it's uh, with Ben uh, to review and then um, proceed from there. And uh, the X509 document, um, we will be discussing in the next uh, slides, but yes, it's passed. ISG evaluation now. So currently we have a few open items. The first one is just a placeholder to uh, remember some discussion that we were having with authors of ISO 18013-5. Um, then there is a media type uh, param uh, parameters. Karsten provided a CL for that. That is uh, now merged. If uh, people are interested, uh, please take a look at uh, the latest draft version in the GitHub repository. Uh, I believe it was we wrote, well, Karsten wrote the uh, text that's we agreed on during the last meeting, but yes, please take a look. And then the next one about allowing uh, OSCORE in the X5U, uh, well, yes, in relation to X5U uh, URIs, and that is done now. Um, if John is here, I don't see him, but uh, yes, I, it's, uh, he can take a look, but uh, otherwise I plan to close this item. Um, then explaining what is the trust relationship for X5 view uh, parameters, and uh, that is uh, an item that I think we can discuss shortly now. And uh, yes, then the last one, I also believe to be uh, handled by, uh, as all requests that I made, it's still not merged, which may be also the case for the um, OSCOR uh, issue. But yes, please take a look uh, if you're interested in those two items at the pull request. And let's uh, discuss now the uh, issue 31, uh, which is about uh, having consistency, uh, well, which was about the uh, yeah, trust relationship uh, that X5 view parameter uh, should have. And uh, John was asking what are the use cases of, of X5 view in general. 
I guess there are different use cases, but uh, one advantage of using it instead of sending the complete a certificate is smaller payload. Um, so, yes, I know um, there were a few people participating in that discussion. Unfortunately, I don't see any one of them uh, right now. Um, so, oh, let's say kind of, yes, uh, they were raised, uh, some of them a uh, while back, but uh, they got some attention uh, rather recently. Uh, well, not really, maybe that recently, it was last year. Uh, January, so there has been no text proposed or no uh, way forward so far, and I was trying to understand uh, what exactly we want to solve uh, by this, whether we just want to add something more to the security considerations or something more was uh, envisioned by uh, weapons. Um, yes, given that I guess nobody has read the issue, maybe uh, or doesn't remember it, maybe nobody uh, in the meeting right now is uh, having enough context to comment. So I will reach out directly to uh, the participants and try to uh, see what is the need there and uh, bring that to a conclusion. Uh, yes, so this is the only item that could require some more work if we decide that we want to clarify some things in the text. Otherwise, I think it's uh, it might be uh, ready to go to the RFC editor. So yes, just here closing the. Um, some of the items for me can be closed now. Okay, so any comments or thoughts so far? Uh, yes, this is Joran. Hi, Milo. Hi. Hi. So I, I just had a question on, on that one. So is, would it be possible or is it a, is it a good idea that we publish a new version once these these issues are fixed and merged yes i think it uh, it would make perfect sense to to publish a new version we could do it also now i guess but uh, yes let's maybe try to uh, reach out to the people if we can't um, get to a consensus uh, quickly then yeah I will uh, see how we publish a new version for this draft. Mm, yeah. I think, yeah. That would be great. We get questions on the old. I mean, it's expired oh. and, and the text is no longer valid. And we, so it's a lot of confusion around the existing oh, is draft. It, so. Is it expired? OK. Uh, yes, in any case, yes, we need to. When it's in ISG review, it's. Uh... It, it's okay. Yeah, okay. It's, 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 it's not fine. expired in, in the data tracker, but it says it's expired, <laughs> which right. can be very confusing for people. Okay. Yes. 
and, and content wise i think the, the main problem is probably that people are reading the document and, and trying to use it and then the, the content is, is different yeah. in the github and um, compared to the published version and so it, yes. it would be great if we could have a, an updated version of it. okay yes uh well yes uh, i can take that action item and uh yes we that updates for the uh, CBOR encoded certificates or uh, maybe any way that we can help to uh, progress that draft. Yeah, we had a meeting among the authors in, in January and uh, well, basically, there, there has been, there are a couple of to-dos in the draft, which we'd like to fix. Uh, one is the uh, OCSP specification. Uh, we discussed in the previous meetings whether we should, what we should include and in terms of revocation. And uh, as I re remember, um, we agreed that not, I mean, not exclude all revocation information and put it in a separate draft. So some revocation information should be included and uh, the most relevant is probably some sort of OCSP uh, usage for revocation here. So, so that's, that's planned to be included for the next version, um, which should be in time for ITF 113. Uh, then there is another to do which is an example of uh, using this dev ID uh, certificate and convert those to C519. So that's also an exercise, uh, straightforward, but we haven't done it, uh, which we hope to do by, by, the next, uh, by the next version. So those are the things that we, we plan to do. Then there's been requests for other implementations there is already one implementation uh, converting from X509 to C509 uh, in Rust by John Matson, and it's it's available as you know in the in the GitHub repo for the Cozy Working Group, so that's uh, open source. Uh, but I think that what the people wanted to have, we were in contact with, was was more like a C implementation or. or or maybe Java. I, I don't remember exactly what they were, were looking for, but there is anyway plans among the co-authors from Rice to make a second implementation of, of that part, and that would also be good to 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 test against each other. So that's plans from the authors' uh, point of view. Um, we have previously asked for reviews here, and there's been some 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 comments but no full review of the draft so that's still uh, appreciated if someone has has time or if the chairs could go and try to find someone that has the time so i think that's the state of this draft any questions or comments okay thank you and now let me stop sharing these slides and share the other slides. And I guess Hannes, you will be the presenter. Yeah, I uh, hope you can hear me. Yes. Can you? Can you guys hear me? I hear you yes. well. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, next slide. Um, I will talk about the uh, COSI HBKE uh, on behalf of uh, Russ and Brendan. Russ is on the call, so uh, that's fantastic. Just a quick update. Um, we had a call for adoption started before Christmas, and uh, so that, that dragged on for a little while, because presumably because many people were on vacation. Um, finally, this year, we submitted uh, a Series 0 version, which was um, is the exact copy of uh, last year's version of the individual 
uh, draft version. So um, there was obviously an attempt to produce a zero one version, um, which triggered a lot of discussion already. The call for adoption led to some feedback. Uh, thanks to John and, and Göran. Um, there is a draft repository which was created by the chairs, uh, which is in the link uh, on this on the screen. Next slide. And the rest of the presentation, I want to talk about the feedback on the list and the discussion and want to get a sense of um, what the group wants to produce this uh, CO1 version. Uh, one topic or the first topic is the question about the registries uh, in used in the HPKE uh, specification. And uh, next slide. And uh, the reuse in, in the COSI uh, document. So for those who hadn't been following any of this work, uh, HPKE stands for Hybrid Public Key Encryption. Um, yeah, it's a public key encryption scheme. And uh, there's a specification which seems to be quite popular, uh, developed in the IRDF working group in the CFRG and the Crypto Forum Research Group. And that's what is being used here and introduced in COSI. And uh, the spec comes with uh, um, three main registries, uh, and the previous approach was, um, which apparently didn't resonate all that well uh, with folks on the list, was to repurpose uh, the existing COSI registries uh, instead of using um, the HPKE defined uh, registries. What that me meant was um, was to create mappings, uh, and so the proposal is. To um to essentially create new parameters uh, that carry um, the values from the HPKE registries, at least for the CAM IDs and the uh, KDF IDs, um, potentially also for or also for the AE IDs, um, to uh, with the purpose of having any algorithm that gets registered in the IANA HPKE registry. To, uh, so that it also becomes available immediately uh, to the COSI uh, functionality, which of course then reduces the standardization overhead in the future. Um, later, Ilari was also uh, in favor in the discussion, so at least we had three people uh, arguing uh, in favor of this. Uh, a secondary issue is where to place those parameters in, in the overall structure, well, but I will get to that in a, in a subsequent slide. So I just want to confirm that the group is um, okay with uh, moving over to this to this kind of reuse of the HPKE algorithm registry. Any any objection or like or other people who are in favor of doing this? I guess uh, Carsten had followed the work. Uh, Russ was uh, in favor, but. Um, of doing that as well, then posted to the, uh, he posted privately to, to the authors. Okay, uh, I assume uh, that that means um, I should go ahead and make that change. Um, uh, next slide. Be, be good on the main to, list. Uh, go ahead, Carl. Would certainly be good to to have a way for uh, one registry. Uh, to actually automatically create entries in another registry. Um, but I think we, we don't have that mechanism in IANA right now. And mm. uh, it, it kind of <laughs> irks me that this is going to, this, this lack of a administrative mechanism is going to influence the representation of this protocol on the wire. Uh, yep. But yeah, it, it's not a disaster. <laughs> it's just ugly. <laughs> yeah. That's that's true. Uh, uh, it is possible to put uh, uh, instructions I, I, to the designated experts in the draft and direct them to ensure consistency between two IANA locations. I've been part of other drafts that have done that in the OAuth context. Uh, Mike, we could do that if we were in charge of both specs, but we're only in charge of one of them. We, we could still write instructions and ask that they be followed, but 
Yeah, it's agree. just much cleaner if you put it in both docks, right? I agree. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, and I understand, of course, the challenge uh, with all of this. So it's not just uh, populating uh, the, the values, but of course, it's not the same value. So you have to uh, line things up um, somehow because the registry values in in the HPKE uh, uh, specification obviously start with uh, um, whatever the whatever the beginning value is, uh, which overlaps with uh, what's in in the COSI related uh, registry entries. So so that was the, the the recommendation, like to actually create new parameters to populate them with with these um, fields. I I personally don't have a strong uh, opinion about it. I just want to. Have something that works on it, um, and I don't. I don't want to create new, sort of, almost empty documents uh, every time someone adds a uh, algorithm to the HPKE um, sort of algorithm. I think nobody wants that. So, um, but so what should we do? Should we uh, basically create new parameters and then reuse that registry, or should we ask? The CFR G to um, come up or to add text to their registry so that uh, the values are automatically populated in uh, in a cozy registry. What's what's the preference of the group on that? Hannes, this is Jonathan. Does um, when this happens, is there any automatic? Does, does it require assignment of of values because COSI tries to keep low values um, reserved for high use um, parameters? So, so is that an issue? Yeah. So, so the issue is like um, so obviously right now there's no issue at all uh, because we can just define mapping. So, for example, um, we could say this specific chem ID would become a new entry in the whatever uh, cozy algorithm uh, registry um, and there would be a mapping between the value assigned to in by the corresponding HPKE registry and uh, the cozy registry but then going forward and that's where the problem surfaces is if someone goes ahead and is interested to define a new algorithm for HPKE they then have to um, based on hopefully some description in in the HPKE specification, then also create the value uh, in the COSI registry. Uh, but they need to, to be told so, or IANA needs to be told to automatically create uh, a value according to certain rules. I, I I don't know how exactly this would work. Whether well, IANA the, does this. Mike has says the right approach here. So it should be the job of the designated expert for the COSI registry to take in these these new values from the HPKE registry. And uh, the, the one thing we could ask CFRG to do is to point out in the HPKE uh, document that the designated expert for their registry is uh, requested to communicate with the poor designated experts of the other registries that are tracking that. Mm. Um, so I, I wouldn't go beyond that in in asking what the, the CFRG to do something because th th that draft is not supposed to manage the COSI registry. The, the uh, COSI designated expert is supposed to do that. Uh, on the other hand, the designated expert for the HPKE registry uh, will know when new stuff is coming in and can alert the other designated expert. Okay. So... Um... Should we do that? Should we give that a try and see whether that works out? I could drop a mail to um, the CFRG list and, and basically ask for that change. It's not too late. It's not an RC yet. Let's give it a try. Okay. Yep. Yeah, that makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Okay, thanks. Thanks for the feedback. Um, Next slide. Um, yeah, the next issue is about the layering. Uh, so this this figure apparently looks a little bit uh, misplaced, but it uh, the point here is uh, this is what is currently in the document based what was there initially. 
uh, which the three colored boxes are supposed to indicate that this is a three layer structure. Uh, and uh, that layering um, is there because uh, that's my interpretation of how the current um, semi static uh, elliptic curve Diffie Hellman um, usage is in, in COSI. Uh, I've modeled it according to, to that. Um, but uh, as you can see, that the layer in the middle is kind of a little bit empty uh, in some sense. And uh, what Ilari suggested, uh, next slide, is to collapse um, the second and the third layer, um, which is obviously more efficient. Um, and uh, it's, it's a little bit of an eye chart, um, <laughs> of course, but if the layer one uh, is, is nothing else than really the en encrypted uh, plain text. So in the in the suit sense, uh, this would be the firmware. And you don't see obviously this gigantic firmware image uh, being encrypted here, but because it's detached, uh, but it could there could be some literally some um, the, firm, the encrypted firmware image in here. That's layer zero. Uh, that's something we are not touching. Uh, that's as is uh, the. The new, the new thing is, um, uh, or the new proposal is to use layer one to essentially uh, populate it with uh, the parameters that we talked about on uh, on the previous slide, which is um, here in this case there are just new parameter names, but uh, ignore that for the moment. So it's uh, just these um, the algorithms, the chem, and the the, um, the HKDF implicitly, and also the a, uh, AAD ID uh, written in here, and the encrypted CAC, which is output of the um, HPKE algorithm, is is at the bottom. And uh, before that is the information about the key that is being used here. So the uh, probably the the most important part um, is the ephemeral key, which I'm going to talk a little bit about a little bit about later as well. So it's um, this is the um, the ephemeral public key uh, that is sent from the um, entity that is encrypting uh, the plain text um, to the to the recipient, and um, and then there's also a key ID which uh, which may or may not be there depending on how you select the key, but uh, but the ephemeral key has to be there. Uh, so that's the that's sort of the the information in in some sense just moved up one layer. Um, yeah, as, as I said, smaller size is an advantage, and it also matches the AES uh, key wrap structure. And the disadvantage is um, that it's, in my opinion, it's not quite on how um, some of the other um, semi-static uh, elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman techniques have been defined in COSI. Um, it's maybe a, a style issue, uh, but uh, yeah. I personally um, like this approach more because it's a little, uh, it's cleaner and, and it's, it matches the, the key wrap structure in terms of the layering. But uh, yeah, I'm curious what, uh, what the group thinks about um, changing the layering or compressing it. This is Russ. I I kind of like it because uh, the the application that's driving this is encrypted firmware in suit, and we have two use cases: one which is a pre-shared key encryption key, um, and the other one is the HPKE. And this lets both use the same approach, where layer zero carries the ciphertext and layer one carries the key management. Um, and so for that reason, I think it's uh, a, a nice way forward. Yeah. Yeah, it's the um, the recipient, uh, this recipient structure kind of uh, the name is maybe also a little bit uh, uh, confusing because, uh, or at least um, as if someone has followed the mailing list, it, it, uh, it may confuse. Um, Hilary wanted to use the the COSI encrypt zero, uh, which doesn't have the COSI encrypt structure. And, um, but that's not really possible because you can't sort of munch it into layer zero. Um, but I think, I think it's okay to have two layers and to have that uniform. 
Carsten? Yeah, I, I, this is the first time I look at this and it, it sure looks good to me on that slide. Uh, so um, I probably have to look at it again, but I would encourage pursuing this approach as well. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. That um, I'm sure you spot errors. You did already on the mailing list, uh, uh, like uh, because we changed the, the identifiers back and forth too many times, I guess. Uh, uh, but but I guess the boxes and so on uh, illustrate the idea. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So at least uh, Göran. Okay. I thought thought you want to say something. Um, okay, so so I'll, I'll um, in zero one version I will move to that uh, layering. Um, okay, uh, next slide. Yeah, and and the cozy key definition. So, um, so we there is obviously a cozy key definition which is used to uh, describe this ephemeral key, and it um, there are some. Or some of the, the classical uh, key types that we use are uh, supported, uh, like the, the NIST uh, P256 uh, R1. And uh, so in that sense, the cozy key structure is fine, which is what you had seen on the previous slide. Um, Hillary, however, uh, suggested to uh, define a new uh, key structure for this, mainly for um, a reason that is described on, on the next slide, but also because um, he thinks um, it will make it easier in the future to add some of the post quantum uh, crypto algorithms once they become available. Um, so let's have a look at the uh, at the changes that he's proposing, which would um, really justify a new key type definition uh, on the next slide. Uh, yeah. Um, so the first the first aspect is that is uh, currently um, if you use uh, this uh, NIST curve, it's a uncompressed point uh, representation, and there are currently no compressed point uh, available. Um, he's suggesting to uh, switch over to compressed point because they obviously uh, reduce what is sent over the wire. Um, but that's okay for me. Um, what I wasn't quite clear about is uh, whether uh, we should have um, a support both in this new key structure, um, support compressed as well as uncompressed points. Um, and even if you define um, uncompressed points, you don't necessarily need a new key structure per se, because you could also make it available to other um, to other algorithms as well that are already supported in, in COSI. Whether that's desirable or not, um, I don't know. Um, so. The question in, in on a high level would be, is is the idea of supporting uh, compressed points uh, something that is desirable to folks in this group? I don't want to ask stupid questions about patterns, but um, I think the reason we haven't done this earlier is that there were still some uh, patent claim considerations that made this uh, inadvisable, but we can do that now. Yeah, yet um, I I will have to double check, but um, I I believe the, the sort of new excitement for these compressed points is due to uh, expired patents. But yeah, definitely something we should double check here. Thank you. Okay. Um, the the other the other aspect is to um, to define uh, the private keys also in the cozy key structure, and the motivation for this is to have um, a way to kind of store configuration information uh, because obviously you have to store the private keys somewhere, um, and this has been exercised uh, already uh, in in two documents. Um, in the encrypted client hello uh, specification uh, where uh, configuration information is actually stored in a DNS or can be stored in a DNS. And uh, Stephen has written a document that defines um, a BEM file format for the private key alongside um, the, the public key 
in yeah in in this document. Um, and I think Hilary uh, suggests that this is um, uh, maybe a good idea to actually define it right away uh, because it could make configuration easier. And after all, uh, even with firmware updates, we need to think about the story on how how do some of the the parameters get um, sent around? How do they get stored and so on? Uh, so that may not be such a terrible idea um, to do that right away. I don't think um, sort of putting it into a separate document is um, is worthwhile. Uh, so so I think that sounds uh, useful, maybe in line with what has been done in the DLS working group uh, in that in that sector, because they have um, gained some experience on what parameters are useful. Maybe maybe not all of them are needed, but uh, but it gives a good um, gives some insight. Um, yeah, so I'm a little bit um, not totally sold on the idea of defining this or defining a new uh, key structure uh, rather than reusing it. But um, if we indeed switch to compressed points, indicating that uh, whatever is in that structure is actually a compressed point for use with HPKE, appears to make a lot of sense uh, to me. Um, so, and it's it's not a huge uh, it's not a huge effort. It's just another value in a registry, an already existing registry, um, in terms of the this new uh, key key type structure. So, I would be I would be okay with that. Um, any opinion on this topic? Uh, rest, uh, so uh, you did a quick search on on what the patents are and the patent situations. Are they expired by now? The uh, one we care about, it says on that uh, Wikipedia page, so that I haven't gone to the patent itself, oh. um, mm -hmm. that it's enforceable through 2020. Okay, that's good news. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that, that would make sense there. Of course, uh, uh, it we would have to implement it as well because it's not something that, um, to my knowledge, is in the common in the common libraries uh, because they shied away from from supporting that feature. Um, so, for exactly the same reason we, <laughs> yeah, quite understandable. Um, so, so there's maybe a little bit of homework to uh, to be done. So, in that sense, I would I would favor like having supporting at least both uh, the compressed and the uncompressed because then you could get something, uh, a reference implementation without uh, um, sort of getting into a lot of trouble. I can already see the, the difficulties getting that through uh, any sort of IPR review in a company who is um, contributing open source code because they have to go to that through that due diligence of uh, patent assessment. Okay. Any any other opinions? Um, I think did I have any other slide? Any other open issues that I wanted to talk about? Yeah. So next next steps. So those I think um, like there were many smaller issues like where exactly do we put the uh, the values? But uh, since we in the, one of the earlier slides we talked about reusing the registry, um, that issue goes away. And so. Um, my or our plan was to create a new draft in time for the next IDF meeting, which is fairly soon already, um, to create examples. Um, it's obviously helpful to have the reference implementation, so the, the AES key wrap stuff that is uh, there. It's not a, not a problem, um, so, but the code for this one has to obviously be updated to match what uh, we just talked about. And, um, and then to uh, reuse it that for the firmware encryption, uh, because we have to update the uh, corresponding suit firmware encryption draft, which makes use of this document. So they do have to get uh, um, in line. And so, yeah, those, those are, those are uh, the ideas. Any, any other suggestion issue? Or, or... Hello, can you hear me? Yep, works. Yeah. Okay, it didn't work before, so I have to rejoin. That's um, 
just wanted to say on the previous issue on the layering, it I, I think it looks good the proposal from Hillary. And uh, if I understand right, uh, with this symmetric key case, you just remove the unprotected, it's an empty unprotected uh, structure. So you just take out the, the, the encapsulated key, I suppose. Yeah, uh, uh, and that yeah, that looks uh -huh. looks good. Uh, let me have a look at the. I actually. I can uh, I can maybe share my screen and can show you the. Is that possible? Can I find it? Uh, you can try. I think you should be able to do that. Can you see my screen? Our, yes. our original plan was to to use the the cozy structure for AES key wrap. Right. But I think it That's still true. ends up being a two layer approach. Yeah. Can Can you see it on my screen? Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so this is uh, this is the the, uh, the key wrap uh, structure, which is uh, I, th I think pretty uncontroversial. Uh, I would say because it's it's in the in the cozy spec, and uh, to me it looks nice, uh, like easily understandable. Um, and as you can see, like there's also the two layer structure here. Layer zero is the encryption of the of the firmware or whatever you encrypt, and uh, and this is um, this is the way how the the spec says that you you use the the key wrap you know like you indicate what algorithm like AES one twenty eight uh, key wrap um, you put a key ID in there like in my previous example and then uh, what this follows what follows here is the is the KEC, uh like the content uh, encryption key is protected with the um, key encryption key. And so the only difference is whether you use protected or unprotected headers. Uh, and that, uh, I think that can be, uh, changed as well. I think that, um, I copied, uh, Hillary's example, but I don't think he paid close attention to where he copied it in there. Um, I think obviously we have to think about like, are there some parameters that are really, um, important that need to be protected? Um, but, uh, I think the question, Hannes, is if you have two pre-distributed key encryption keys, and some recipients have one, and some recipients have the other one, uh, do we send two messages or do we send one message with uh, two recipient infos, one for each KEK? -E -K? Okay. Um, I think that's the mm -hmm. thought process we need to go through to come to the answer. Yeah. So, uh, like sh shooting from hip, this is uh, like my take is like if we have two recipients, this structure would be for two recipients would be just uh, that's not unfortunate, but uh, it would be like right. copied twice here because uh, the kek uh, for recipient one, the the content at uh, a key encryption key would be different uh, for recipient one versus for recipient two. So this would be have this would appear twice as these two boxes show, but this one would only uh, show up once because we are encrypting the firmware image with um, with the same with the same kek the content encryption key. Right, but if you look at the diagram you put up for the two layer HPKE, you can have multiple recipients. Yeah, here, um, here, um, because you think, have that, uh, sequence. Think, yeah. So I think in this new structure, I think it would follow very much what, uh, what I had just shown. If we have, um, two recipients here, um, of course, the, not of course, but, the the, the keck, the content encryption key would be the same for the two, uh, or maybe the same for the two uh, recipients for the two. Uh, but, uh, um, of course the, the, well, ephemeral... the no, the CAC would be the same, but the, the ciphertext of the CAC would be different for yeah. each recipient. Yeah. So the, the CAC would be the same. Of course, the encrypted CAC would exactly. be the same because, uh, and that was my point. And that yes. would be the same as the key encryption key. If you had two of them, yeah, 
the keck would be the same, but the wrapped keck would be different. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's what I was trying to get to. I think that's the thought process that'll lead us to the right structure. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. But did uh, Gern, did that sort of answer the question in, in any way, or did we just drift off to something else? Yeah, that, that wasn't my question, but that's that's fine. I think that's a good good thought. No, I, my, my question was a little bit more like uh, whether you use unprotected or protected headers and and uh, uh, but but that's uh, I think mm. it's a good point. I didn't really understand. So if you the use case, if you have multiple, do you have? I mean, it would be it would seem to me that either you have sort of a single firm where you want to update. Uh, but it, it's it's multiple receivers. Is that what you're saying? That's yes. correct. That's correct. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, but but in that case, you would have kind of plenty of receivers, pro, most likely. And yes, maybe, but they may have common, like they may be grouped into the people who know K K one and the people who know K K two. Okay. That mm -hmm. was, yeah, I think there are different use cases. Like uh, in some use cases, there would be just. Uh, one recipient that like each firmware image would be sent to a specific recipient. That's of course possible. Uh, then there's the case where you have one firmware image, but it, uh, that encrypted firmware image is sent to multiple recipients. And that's what we have been just talking about. But then there's also the possibility um, like of the group communication that you've been looking into where you have um, um, uh, multiple recipients and multiple um, or a single firmware image, but uh, the recipients all use the same key. Um, hmm. Right? Is that true? That's that's one example. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So there, there, yeah, there are two yeah. different variations. Uh, yes. yes. Yeah. Fair enough. No, no, I'm happy. All of them. Thanks. Okay. Cool. What we got? Perfect. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that's all of yes. have to say. Thanks. Thank you all for the feedback uh, that helped me to um, sort of produce a zero one version. And and of course, yes. all of this needs to be confirmed on the mailing list. Yeah. Sorry. Yes. Was there something you wanted to mention about reference implementation and hackathon? Yeah. So we had, uh, in previous hackathon, we have been working on on this and and adjacent uh, technologies. And uh, hopefully uh, the next ITF meeting will also uh, um, sort of work out uh, fine face-to-face -face meeting wise. And uh, so I'm hoping that we can continue uh, that work and specifically with the changes that we are making to the document, we obviously have to update the code. Did, did that answer your question? Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, thank you, Hannes, for the presentation and everyone for the participation. Uh, it seems that there is a clear way forward, so that sounds perfect. Are there any other items that anyone wants to discuss? Take that as a no. So thank you all for your participation and have a nice day. Bye. Thank you. Thank bye. you. Thanks. Bye bye.